famous and bitching about being rich and it's like kind of like the woe is me like sad celebrity song and i was yeah. like i was so bitter about it i was like how f dare you like <laughs> i would give anything to be in that position i know enough about tom mcdonald but i don't really know a lot about his history and i feel like he's going to explain it pretty well on this roseanne interview that he does with her so yeah let's do it shout out to tom shout out to everything he has going on basically this part is, this this video is going to be about him telling how he started and stuff what really got him started to do rap and stuff like that so let's get into this one make sure that like button make sure y'all subscribe let's go <laughs> thank you very much yeah it's been that it's been I'm like, Donald, weeks. everybody i'm sorry yeah, it's been in it. Thanks for having me. And I, and I just want to say, I've been a, I've been a fan of, of you for much longer than you've been a fan of me. So I'm, I'm flattered. That's probably true. How long have you been famous? Oh God, famous. Uh, six years, maybe. Six years ago is when you got famous. That was your first song. That was my. I mean, rap, whatever. My, yeah, it's, no, it's, a, it's a song. Yeah, that was the first one that Is went. Is that what they're called yeah, now? Yeah, Songs. Yeah, that was the first one that went <laughs> viral, and the first time people ever figured out who the hell I was. So let's talk about that. I love this story. It so reminds me of me, of my story, and all the people like us that did come from working class backgrounds and hit it big in entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was a. It was a pretty. It was a pretty wild ride. So. Essentially, what had happened was um, <clears throat> I was an alcoholic, and mm -hmm. uh, that's good. That's a good point. Yeah, that'll help you get there. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think a lot okay. of us in the entertainment industry have that in common too. Yep. Um, right one. So, okay. So yeah, I was an alcoholic for quite a while, and that's how this started for me. I got pretty tired of you know living the same old life I was living. You know, drinking, waking up drinking and doing other stuff that i ain't too proud of uh and just repeating that cycle you get to the point where you're just fed up with your shit and the song by tommy don't it always you know resonates with me and what got me out of that funk was sober that song always gets to me every single time but that's what got me out of my funk honestly made me stop you know doing all the stuff i was doing as far as alcohol goes and drugs in general that, that's what really got me out of it so it's pretty cool to hear him talking about this right now alcoholic for quite a while and that led to like a pretty pretty large mental breakdown um and then, Ooh, yeah yeah we got a lot in common um this is mom's last week <laughs> <laughs> so i was i was a mess and i i i stopped talking to all of my friends and stopped talking to my family Same. and um i was having a really difficult time i couldn't eat and i couldn't go outside and i stopped making music for a year um, wow. and it's, it's, it's a pretty dark, uh, story to, to kick off the show with. So I'll give you the readers. No, it ain't. Cause you know what? Here's what I think. Well, all artists, they have to go through the dark night of the soul to grow in their art is, you know, have, do you think that way? Absolutely. Um, it's weird because it was like the worst thing that ever happened to me. Uh, mm -hmm. but retrospectively, it's like the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, it taught me a lot about myself and, and what I want to do with my platform and, um as a lot of personality like sometimes whenever like i give my motivational speeches it comes from my past bro it, it gives you more substance as a person this is not i mean it's not i'm not saying you got to go through a lot of trauma and stuff like that just to become a good person but it's better if you know about the stuff and speak from experience and try to warn other people and talk other people out of it before they even get introduced to that lifestyle or even think about doing it you know because so i've had a lot of people hit me up and say that you've helped me out and this and that and that's that's really what i do this for honestly plus i love it in general but that's one of the main reasons i do it just try to help somebody that i probably never have the opportunity to see help in person so yeah it's like the, one of those weird dualities where it's like if it never happened i wouldn't be here right now facts and, right and because exactly. it, yeah and because it happened i almost wasn't here right now so <laughs> um so it's weird but yeah so i was just drinking all the time and partying all the time and um shit i'm laying in bed one night at like three in the morning and i get up to get out of my bed and uh you know i, I was to the point where i would i would drink i would wake up and i'd have beer next to my bed and i'd reach over crack a beer drink when I, when I got done a beer, I'd get mm -hmm. out of bed, kind of go about my business. 
eat breakfast, call my friends. There was a bunch of bars close by where you could get a meal for five bucks. So I'd meet them at the bar, have breakfast. I knew the bar. It's almost like we lived the same exact life, bro. Pretender. So they'd give us free shots and cheap drinks. And I'd drink all day long until the nighttime and go to sleep and start over again the yep. next day. Would... Now how? Yep, yep. That is facts right there. It got to the point with me like where I wasn't happy at all unless I had a fifth at all times. And an eight ball. I'm just be honest with you. I'm gonna be very honest right now. It got to that point. And when it got to that point, that's when I realized, bro, I need to change. I need to do something with my life. I feel like I'm better than this bar shit. I'm better than, you know, just waking up, drinking alcohol for breakfast, barely eating anything. Like, it, it got bad, bro. And that's what's going on. Uh, I, th I think I was about like 25, 26. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit later, 27. So mm -hmm. that, that cycle had gone on for, for years though. Um, mm -hmm. And so this one night I, I get up out of bed, it's about three in the morning. And um, I remember just taking a step and my whole room kind of went like, <sighs> and it kind of like went with me. And it wasn't like the drunk wobbles. It was like, there was something else going on. Um, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden my heart starts pounding and I can hear it in my oh, ears. Wow. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm dying. I'm, I'm, I think I'm having a heart attack. Um, so I like, ran to the bathroom and looked at myself in the mirror and I was just ghost white. And it was like the first time I'd ever like looked at myself in the mirror and like literally did not recognize myself. I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? Um, what did you look like? Uh, if you can imagine me looking worse than this, that. <laughs> um, I was in Canada at the time and their their healthcare system is just totally fucked. Um, it's, yeah. it's free. But if you want to talk to a, a therapist or something like you're looking at six, eight months sometimes. And I'm like, yeah. fuck, I, I don't know if I'm going to survive till tomorrow. I'm not going to make it eight months. Right. So I go to this doctor and I tell him for the first time, I told the doctor flat out, um, if you don't give me something that's going to like make me feel better, I'm going to kill myself today. I will not be back here again. I, I've been here four or five times. Like you're, you'll never see me again. It's, it's, it's it. It's, I'm done. So he gives me some sort of like super powerful kick ass like Xanax or something. So I go home and I take this pill and 20 minutes later, for the first time in nine months, I felt like myself. And I was like, mm -hmm. it gave me this relief, a, a very small window, you know, it would mm -hmm. only last for a very short period of time. And I sort of knew like, I, I can't be on this shit for the rest of my life. I It's like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to me, pharmaceuticals like putting a like a band-aid on a bullet hole like it might stop the bleeding yeah. for like a minute but you're it's going to kill you eventually yeah. yeah so i would take i started taking the medication so that i could regain some sense of myself and when i was in that state i would immediately start reading and researching mental health and mental illness mm -hmm. and the things that i could do to make myself feel better so i cut out all caffeine no soda no fast food um, mm -hmm. no, no junk food. I started running and exercising every day. I started meditating. I started reading books. Um, and, uh, it was just a really chaotic time in my life. And it was a big, it was a big ass wake up call from God. hundred percent, hundred percent. It was that like come to Jesus moment where it was just like, literally like you either clean your shit up, get, pull, get your act together or it's done. It's over for you. This is going to be the rest of your life. Excellent. Um, so I did the work and, um, after a period of time, I, I got off the medication and, um, I got my visa approved, um, to come to the United States and, um, uh, I left and I came here and, um, my girlfriend Nova, um, I stayed with her. So Nova and I've been together for seven years and we've been best friends. Hi Nova. Yeah. She's in the, she's dealing with the dogs, but she loves you. Um, so Nova, she's amazing. She saved my life. So Nova invited yeah. me um, to come stay with her. And we've been best friends for 16 years. Uh, Nova put me on my very first rap show ever. Uh, I was Well, that's what we didn't even get to yet. You know, we're getting yeah, people yeah. like us that we, we all, all the time, mm -hmm. we, we're, we got a lot of, uh, well, we want people to know who we are behind all that stuff they like. And then, of course, you find out they don't give a fuck. They just want to see the shit they like and they want you.
Now, you'd be surprised. A lot of people do because it gives them motivation and shows you that he came from this. So and look at where he is now. So you can do the same thing, possibly. If you want it bad enough. You to shut the fuck up and give it to him. You know what I mean? Yep. It's kind of it takes a lot of hits in the head to see it. But the artistry that I wanted to talk about your artistry. And when you first knew you were a wordsmith, let's talk about that. Like sure. how you craft an idea with words, how powerful you think words are. Well, first of all, how do you feel being number one this week? with Ben Shapiro, who I'd like to go out to dinner with and argue Torah with because he's wrong, wrong, wrong. Hmm. But anyways, what did you think of all that? Um, it was crazy. Uh, it, it was really bizarre. Like Ben had me on the Shapiro show last year and um, because of some like political funny video that I'd made on Instagram. So he had me on to talk and then he had made a joke at the end of the interview, like, haha, like maybe I'll get on a song with you one day. And we both just laughed at it. And then essentially the interview ended. And when I got off the interview, I said to Nova, I wonder if I could get fucking Ben Shapiro to rap. And she was like, <laughs> she's like, that would be crazy. Um, so I reached out to them and I was like, look, I have this fucking idea. Like, I, I don't know if Ben would be into it, but I think it'd be hilarious I think it'd be a massive troll on the music industry. And, um, oh, it was too. It was right? fantastic. And I did, it just was so popular. Some people took it too serious, talking about something he needs to apologize to the whole rap culture. And you know, fuck that. It ain't that serious. Popular, the most popular thing, the number one thing with a bullet. It's so killer great. Thank you. So, because it's done independently, it's just, yeah. It's, yeah. You know, it's just you and, you know, your vision and, uh, and no, nope. you know, talk nope. about that. How long have you known you had something to say? Well, I was a pro wrestler, uh, when like the WWF stuff, when I was like 14 and then really, yeah, what? Yeah. And then <laughs> I didn't know I'm trying to look up some, um, videotapes of that. I gotta, I gotta see it. I was about, I think 17 years old. I had been writing sort of raps and poetry and rock songs and stuff secretly um, in my binders and notebooks for like a long, 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 long time. And then I got injured, uh, when I was wrestling, I crushed all the, I feel like he was a Jeff Hardy fan cartilage in both my knees. So I was hobbling around on crutches and stuff for many months. And just like as a creative person, like it just, it killed me. That was my outlet. That was like my creative outlet. Um, so without wrestling in the picture, I was like, fuck, what am I going to do with myself? Um, my one other like secret love has always been music like maybe i could maybe i could do something with that so i asked my parents for a laptop for christmas and they got me a laptop and i installed some recording software i started recording songs <clears throat> and then i was like what's the next logical step here I, I guess now that i've recorded the songs i need to perform them in front of people and see if i'm any good at this so i started reaching out to local rappers saying like hey when's the next rap show like and can I get on this rap show and they said well there's this girl Nova and she throws shows and you should reach out to her so I emailed Nova and said hey I'm a rapper can I rap on your show and she said send me your songs if they don't suck I'll put you on so I sent her my songs and they sucked but for whatever <laughs> reason Nova gave me the benefit of the doubt and said hey if you come put up posters for the rap show with me I'll put you on the show so I met up with her put the poster the avenue and then Nova put me on my very first rap show ever. So that's kind now, of Now was this before was this before you had your facial Shout out to Nova, man. Shout out to Nova. Facial tattoos. Well, you know, an, another product we sell is those Oh, you might not have might have been a different thing, you think? <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. Um <laughs> I think Nova I think Nova likes them. And um they de they definitely like I, I definitely fit in the rap world now, so I love your tattoos, and I told you I love, love, love your hair. <laughs> what do you call that, do? Turn to the side. I love it so much. Well, it's, it's like, it's it's like warrior Viking, some sort of tribal deal. Well, I stole it it's from the lead cool. singer at Pantera. <laughs> Tom, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you mind? Yeah. How far from your wrestling injury was it until you had your breakdown? 
Was do you think they're uh, linked? Because... Uh, no, no, there that that was about ten years. So okay, sort of like where I was going with that whole thing was like Nova and I became best friends after this rap show, and then uh, we stayed in touch forever, but we parted ways. Nova went out to Toronto. I stayed on the West Coast. She ended up getting a record deal with Island Def Jam. They moved her to L.A. This is many years have passed. Then I have my mental breakdown. I sober up and get myself better. And Nova says, hey, come to L.A. and live with me. So I come down to L.A. and I'm staying with Nova in Crenshaw, um, which is like the hood. Horrible. It's a, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, a tough, it's a tough part of town. And we're living there together. Not where I lived. I lived, <laughs> I lived on Crenshaw. Yeah, but you were in the West Side of Crenshaw. Yeah, it was beautiful. Oh, you're yeah, you're 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 at the other side. Yeah. 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 So, so Nova and I are living in Crenshaw together, and it's like pretty grim. We're like living in like an essentially like almost a, a like a crack shack, and it's just like the walls are full of mice. And I I'd go to the kitchen in the middle of the night and open the cupboards, and this cockroaches running across all our plates uh -huh. and stuff, and the the roofs leaking, and we can't afford to do like groceries and pay rent in the same month like our power was cut off so often that i had an extension cord that i used to keep coiled up behind the fridge and when the power got cut off i'd run the cord out into my neighbor's garage and and plug it into his garage so our food in the fridge didn't spoil like it was fucking grim Damn. and did he uh, know about it part of me yeah he knew about it he was cool he was cool um and then it was like so fucking bizarre it was like literally like one day you know, the it's beyond mice and men <laughs> for real, <laughs> literally. So it was bizarre. Like one day we're, we're sitting there and the power had just come back on after a week of being cut off and, and, and we have no food and no money for rent. we literally have nothing. Oh, and I, I have half a cigarette left. This is like, Oh no. Blows my mind to this day. And, and I'm like, love I'm sitting in this house and this, I think it was like a Drake song or a G Easy song comes on the computer or the radio or whatever. And whoever it was was sort of like bitching about being famous and bitching about being rich. And it's like kind of like the woe is me, like sad celebrity song. And I was yeah. like, I was so bitter about it. I was like, how fucking dare you? Like, <laughs> I would give anything to be in that position um, and not in the position that I'm in now. Um, I was so fucking offended by it. And I went out and sat on the front porch um with half a cigarette and in the time that it took me to smoke that cigarette but it was literally like i there's nothing no other way to explain it it was literally like god like reached down and like spoke through me into my phone and i wrote this song in like 10 minutes i don't remember stopping really? yeah i don't remember stopping to think oh what word rhymes here or like what should i say at this part or like anything like a typical songwriting was it just like a download hit you and you had to download it just like that yeah and and yeah. by the time i'd finished smoking the cigarette i had written this song and my hands were shaking on my phone i almost had a panic attack i ran into the house and i said no but i just wrote the song it's gonna change our fucking life um you I, knew it right away knew, well because it came through you right yeah i, I have, you think I, it came you feel like it came straight from God through you to your fingers? That's the only explanation I can come up with. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, that, that's what I thought. You know, th there has been, there's been a lot of times in my life, especially growing up, that I wasn't sure if there was anything that existed beyond us. Um, and that was one of those experiences where it was just like, oh, I'm actually a very small part of what's going on here. There's something much mm -hmm. more powerful than me here. Um, it was just one of those things. And I, how long was that from when you were so depressed and you took that one good pill? How how long was that? Six months. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So I ran. And you moved to Canada to U.S. in that time. Yeah. Yeah. And your power shut off. Got rats. Yeah. You write this song. What happens next? I run it. I run in the house. I'm freaking out. And I say to Nova, hey, I just I just wrote the song. It's going to change everything. That was pretty cool to find that out. Though. I didn't know most of that stuff. I knew some of it, but I didn't know most of it. But that's pretty cool hearing his backstory. But yeah, y'all let me know if y'all want me to finish the rest of this in the comment section down below. Make sure that like button. Make sure y'all subscribe. And I'm going. Peace. I know enough about Tom McDonald, but I don't really know a lot about his history. And I feel like he's going to explain it pretty well on this Roseanne interview that he does with her. So yeah, let's do it.
Shout out to Tom. Shout out to everything he has going on. And with all that being said, let's get into this video. Let's go.